you may not be aware of this, but the ecclesia has been commissioned by Jesus himself to do certain things in the earth. Whereas the religious institution called church is typically passive with only a small fraction of the people actually participating in the work of the Great Commission. Nevertheless, the ecclesia is rising up and it is not passive at all. The ecclesia is bold, courageous, and empowered by heaven to do the work of the kingdom. The only thing that can transform the culture is the power of the kingdom of heaven. So, after living a sinless and perfect life, Jesus, the God-man, the pattern man, left the earth, but not before giving a commission and mandate to his disciples, both past, present, and future. This commission is found in Mark 16, 15 through 18. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Proclaim the good news of the kingdom. Notice that we are told to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. This is something that we don't do enough. In fact, some Christians don't do it at all. But we are commanded by Jesus himself to proclaim the good news to all of creation. We should be so full of the fire of God that we proclaim it to everyone we meet and everyone that we know. These signs will accompany those who believe. Another key point of this passage is that these signs will accompany those who believe. But in the body of Christ, you have basically two groups. Those who believe that we are no longer able to operate in the miraculous. And you have those who fully embrace miracles. So who's right? The Bible says these signs will accompany those who believe. So it will work for those who who believe and step out to do it, that will be their reality. But on the other hand, for those who don't believe, it will not work. Although the authority to operate in the spiritual dimension has been conferred on the entire body of Christ, it is only activated by those who believe. So the miracles of the kingdom are only available to those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Part of the Great Commission requires us to cast out demons. Now, it must be understood that whenever you operate in the supernatural realm under a strong anointing of God, demons will manifest. I realize that there is a segment of the church that doesn't believe in such things, but Demons are real, and Jesus had to deal with them in his ministry. On one occasion, Jesus was simply teaching the word in the synagogue when a demon yelled out through his human host, Luke 4, 31 through 36. And he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching. For his word possessed authority. And in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. 
But Jesus rebuked him saying, be silent and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed and said to one another, what is this word? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. This type of scenario happened to Jesus several times in his ministry. His presence and the anointing on his life would literally torment demons, provoking them to manifest. The same thing is true today. When a man or woman walks with God and has a strong anointing on their life, if demons are present, they will manifest. In those situations, we must know beyond any shadow of a doubt that we have authority to cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. Part of the equipping of the Great Commission is the ability to speak in new tongues. Now it should be understood that there are three different types or manifestations of tongues. There is the tongues that every believer receives when they are filled with Holy Spirit and receive the dynamic power of God. Then there is the gift of tongues, which works in tandem with the gift of the interpretation of tongues. See 1 Corinthians 12.10. And finally, there are diverse tongues. This is a manifestation of Holy Spirit where a person speaks supernaturally in a language that they did not learn and don't understand. This is used as a sign and a wonder for people, especially unbelievers, whose native language it happens to be. See Acts 2, 8 through 12. They will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. In taking the message of the kingdom to every part of the globe, God knew that we would inevitably run into situations where snakes and scorpions and other poisonous creatures would be present. But the believer is able to operate in the supernatural dimension where poison has no effect on us. We can see an example of this in Paul's journeys. See Acts 28, 3 through 6. Finally, believers are empowered with the ability to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This is one of the methods of healing that Jesus used throughout his ministry to minister to the sick. The way that it works is that, is that by faith as a member of the ecclesia and body of Christ, the man or woman stands in Christ's stead and commands healing to their body. Then, by faith, the sick person receives their healing. The Bible then says they will recover. This means that it may be instantaneous or it may be gradual. But in either case, the healing anointing is at work in their body as long as it is not short-circuited by doubt, unbelief, negative words, or disobedience. The Bible then says they will recover. This means that it may be instantaneous or it may be gradual, but in either case, the healing anointing is at work in their body. And as long as it is not short-circuited by doubt, unbelief, negative words, disobedience, or a number of other things, they will recover. So in order to be the ecclesia, we must walk in the mandates of this commission. The religious model called church won't get this done, but the ecclesia that Jesus is building is empowered to do it. Well, that's going to do it for me today. If this has been a blessing to you, please give this video a thumbs up. Also, please visit our website at heavenculture.co and join our Heaven Culture community by filling out the form and giving us your name and your email address. Once again, thanks so much for your time. I look forward to continuing this journey with you.